All right, good morning, good day, good afternoon, happy Monday. Today we will be reviewing VeChain. Let me press play, this might take a while. And bang on the money, thank you. And we will be watching VeChain playing out on its Laplace distribution cone. Okay, so uh, the initial one day Laplace distribution cone, the latest flash was 11th of December, 2022. So that's nearly uh, a year and eight months ago, okay? And all we're doing is we're gonna observe here, the pink lines to the blue lines. Uh, if it covers the blue line, wants to go push for the next blue line above it, over here, holds that pink, wants to push to that blue, all right? With a general observation here, fails that blue, wants to come back down to a mean reversion, so it didn't fail that blue, fails that blue, wants to come back down to a mean reversion, all right? and then more than likely touch the other side of the blue. Uh, this is getting a little bit choppy. There we go, now she's coming in, coming into our pinks. And I think we are nearly done with it. Today's price action is a little bit scary. Woo! Okay, give me the code, thank you very much. All right, so long story short, if it fails this blue, wants to come down and more than likely try and hit the orange mean reversion on this 24 hour Laplace distribution cone with no skew. Hold above this orange, obviously go hit the pink. It failed to hold above the pink, so that's technically not a bullish structure. Came back down, bounce off the blue. So this might be forming a little squeeze, draw your funny pizza Dorito, but we will get back to it. We have more Laplace distribution cones to be had at a later stage of this analysis. Okay. So, VediWap on the 90 day. All right. Is VeChain pain? Is it gain? Is it just fucking around? Not letting us know what the situation is. Currently, on the left hand side of the screen, we've been able to bounce off the reverse wave tendy. It's around about where it took my long couple of weeks ago now, maybe 10 to 14 days ago, something like that. If it fails this over here at about, just call it 20 cents, then uh, I think the party is over for VeChain. If it can hold here on the 90 day at 20 cents, I am looking, even though it has had a mean reversion in this 90 day, I'm looking for a push back up to 30 cents. Furthermore, 46 cents. So 30 cents, 46 cents, holds above here on the top right at 44, 45 cents, back into 66 cents. Any failures below 20 cents, oh, I've, I've got some bad news. Anyway, I really like this coin. Uh, don't really want to be too emotional about it, but yeah, they got, they got a lot of partners. Okay, so another thing we need to just remember for future observations as we're dropping in, this is the 45 day, we have a 15 cent target down here, okay? Deadly, we can pull it up on the 24 hour code. All right, deadly target, but yes, there is a technically a bounce at the bottom of the previous market that is showing itself here. Now, in order for VeChain to try and strike this hidden bull div that's formed over here, it needs to start closing above uh, 20, just call it 23 cents on the next print. That will be shy, we'll call it 22 and a half cents. Two and a half cents. Sheesh. I wish this thing was at 22 cents. Two and a half cents. All right. Start closing above there. That will allow your general RO bots to push through. ALR, alpha lasing re returns are starting to diminish to the downside. Okay. With that 90 day here at these prices and how much it's bled today, uh, VChain's always an underperformer in the market but it at least follows the market, but it can get bled pretty hard. So we have about 10 days and nine hours until this 45 day hidden bull div comes into play before it really has to start defending itself into a new pivot, okay? Then we have the 21 day. 21 day is looking pretty good. My only observation here is in the next 13 days and nine hours, I need uh, PCs, that's pretty good. Even though we're dumping here, we can see that these PCs on the bottom right are losing correlation to the downside, okay? It technically is still in serious dump mode. Only thing holding it up here from hitting 10 cents, you could say on this chart on the right, 
is the fact that we have DLP up, at least the fast movers up, which will start, sorry, too much coffee, which will start to hopefully turn around this DLP over here, which how I look at it, maybe not the other guys trading these tools, uh, is a drive of a bullish div. Okay, we have RO here, mean reverting through. As you can see, the fast RO came through, but price action failed to hold above 22 cents. Okay, failing to hold above 22 cents is not so good because any closes below here allows the bears to strike on the 21 day mean reversion again. Okay, and they'll get serious legs. The bears will get serious legs to the downside if this volatility signature rule doesn't change around. So what are the two rules I'd be looking for? I'd be looking for a contraction in volatility, all right, which would be my next best guess, whilst these PCs are pointing down, which would cause a positive drift, which then makes this a range, all right? Any failures below 20 cents, 47, the dump continues. <sighs> Furthermore, the other side of that rule would be, which is going to be quite hard because you need a really big dildo back up, one 21 day dildo and hold above 24 cents in order to turn that PC around and get it close enough to the mean that the next print in 13 days and nine hours, or just call it 24 plus 10, that's 34 days. In the next 34 days, there needs to be one solid candle to the upside or two in this case, because there'll be a print in between and I should hold above 24 cents and a half, two cents and a half. Um, and that will allow these rules to carry on pushing through to the upside on the 21 day. What have we got here? We've got that same, nearly, we have a similar target on the reverse wave tendies as to that 45 day, this guy here at 15 cents. So 14 day has started to bounce off this reverse wave tendy, okay? Maybe another flash down to nine, 1.9, one and a half, how do I even say that? 1.9 cents and a half, okay? So if it does start to fail here, yes, there might be a hopium buy order left here. Problem is, is the 14 day is currently in dump mode. The RO is driving, push, trying his best to put in hidden bull devs, but uh, I'd give it maybe six more days before the, the bulls actually try and step it in here and try push it back up to 25 cents. Why do I say that? We have uh, DLP mean reverting, so that's usually going to give off a good flash. Why did this candle sell off over last week or as it's been printed? It's for the simple fact that uh, volatility rules are saying it's a dump mode. Even though the momentum indicator is saying up, the volatility rules dictate the direction, at least intra-candle until between open and close, the volatility direction dictates 90% of the time what those ROs or momentum indicators are going to do. Here, where's our problem? Okay, you start closing above uh, two cents 11 fair that will allow the ALR to hold its signature furthermore this other indicator at the bottom here will allow it to hold its signature as you start closing below it you'll see that that thing can flash red or these turn down and that's going to fail this hidden drive of or regular bull div that's forming here okay seven day Laplace distribution not bad that it's sideways here came in entered reverse wave tendy up to the other side of the reverse wave tendy here let me just zoom in on that side in case anyone's looking there up into that other reverse wave tendy general observation here is these momentum indicators if it holds above uh, two cents 092 they will have the opportunity to try and push again back up into 22 cents and if it holds above there, that volatility signature will allow it to catch a trend, an entropy trend, all right? So there is a trending move to be had from here. I'm guessing with all this momentum indicators pointing up, it's going to try a push up. Now, we, this is pretty cool. So we have two saying up, we have ALR saying down, which is fine because our ALR is matching our rule here with volatility, which is technically telling us a range sideways on the seven days candle, okay? It's not a bad thing. If you can hold this range, that candle stays small, which makes it easier to flip when the next candle prints. All right, so this, it keeps the data sensitive. And when it does flip, you can get serious moves off of it. We've had one, two, three small candles in comparison to look at all of these other weekly candles. Okay. 
Here we have the five-day Laplace distribution. I will pull it up on the far left, so no skew in the data set. What's it telling us? No skew in the data set means no skew. Nothing calculated from previous candlesticks, only from this candlestick. Obviously, it's red, but that would tell us naturally because you're opening on a red candle where volatility was at zero. Is that at the right one? Yes, it is, okay? Where volatility is opening up zero is going to have a negative skew in the cone, uh, a negative drift in the cone, all right? We know that there is there's a negative skew in the cone and we know that there's an additional negative drift in said cone because these two blue lines are below the orange one, okay? Now, general rules of hopium and how this cone works, I'll, show, I'll switch this on, but I need to remember to switch that on to quantify levels. All right, so opens up, wants to hit the blues, it pretty much hits both blues. All right, let's just super zoom here. Opens up, hits both blues. So pretty much everyone gets screwed, comes in, holds pink, pushes back up, hits the blue, fails those blues, what do we look for? We look for at least these blues down here. And that's exactly what it did. Okay, so it failed those topside blues, and now it's just trying its best to hold inside this cone. Any failures from, just call it outside of this region here at two cents, I would be looking for a push back down to about 18, two cents, 1.8 cents, okay? Holding above this two cent Laplace distribution cone, I would start to look for it to try and regain this region here, which got denied at a reverse te wave tendy mean, not so good. All right, that's rather weak output from V chain. But if it does get above here, I do look for another touch to about 22.7 cents okay what's being quantified as you can see here as the blue line touches they get quantified in the cone and that's where the liquidity is sitting there is liquidity sitting up here at 30 at three cents all right yet to be tested again this is five days so give it about another 15 days from this print there will be another zone of liquidity printing at about 2.9 and a half cents okay that's if it can keep itself at least above this liquidity zone here at two cents fifty. Okay, hold above there. Cool story. Cool story. So this is a very big pivot. At least I would say for the next ninety days, if it can hold above this region here, I think that there might be a bottom put in for V chain. Obviously, it's an underperformer, so it's actually going to be quite hard to call out. Then we have the skewed cone similar effect we have liquidity building up here at about 31 and a half cents three cents 100 Meh. it's quite high it's up into its previous uh to make a lower high if it fails there there's another zone here at two si two cents six and as you can see we're failing these orange lines so we've got to hold above two cents 0 0.55 in order to try and hold that 45 day pivot, this one, that RO turning up in 10 days. So they're gonna have to put in a lot of work here. We can see that there's a 1.9 and a half cent failure that can try hold that. Okay, back to the 24 hour cone, beautiful cone. I, will leave, I won't leave it off with this. Let's get the direction of volatility, sorry. I'm talking to my chair. There, there, that's uh, still in dump mode, looking to turn around, that's in dump mode, that's 50-50 on the seven day, that's 50-50 on the five day, that's negative drift on the three day, RO down, a little bit of choppy noise signature here, and this is your number here, 19.85 or 19 cents. Okay, what would I be looking for? Given I use this 24 hour cone to trade this thing or at least hold and go from color to color i'm looking for another touch at about uh one cent 900 okay <sighs> if it's if if the bulls are here this week they're gonna try hold it above this region here two cents one uh you hold it above two cents one again you can push it up into two cents four but any failures here i do look for another push down to about one cent nine one cents eight nine five 
All right, you start failing here. We're back into like 13 cents. All those higher term time frame ones. Here's another quantified target from like the 21 day. It's down here, 17 cents. Okay. And the rules are it goes from blue to blue. The only time this thing actually gets bullish is if it holds above 2 cents 43. Until then, you're just going to be kicked around in this range. As we failed this pink, the option for 1 cent 4, you could say, is in the books. Problem is, is it wants to go from blue to blue, all right? I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but that's uh, like sub 1 cent, 0 0.008. All right, so that's like a huge loss from here. It's, it's like more than 50 to 70%. Okay, hold above there, fair. I will buy here if it gets there, and I will buy here if it gets there. That's all right. I've got no qualms in that. I do have uh, some untouched targets down there, which I don't like. But just to quantify those blue levels, at least here on the mean, uh, we got about a same target, eight. Eight. And what's that? That's about a seven. All right. Sub cents. Now, that's only really going to happen, as you can see here. We'll zoom up. Is this last little blue hopium bounce to be had? at two cents all right hold above these regions here at two cents cool v chain might actually turn around and have a good run to the upside pain or gain that's good shit so this is that was a 24 hour let me get the direction of volatility of them hey a lot of them are saying down at the moment did this thing pump itself dump itself into what it's technically in a negative drift so if it holds this negative drift today I would be maybe looking for a midweek two cent. Okay, that's just started under trend mode. So I am technically looking here if today doesn't close out strong, or at least till Wednesday doesn't close out strong. This is naturally where my bias is sitting at about two cents. Okay, negative drift, whole bunch of small candles down. So volatility doesn't expand on these lower term time frames, but it's contracting and it's negative and it's contracting, making a negative rule in price action. I would guess about three, four candles it would take to get here. Um, so there's slow movement happening. 12 hours sure is looking good. 12 hours only really going to save itself if it holds itself above the two cents 100 region. If it can do that, this would actually be a very sneaky long into 22 cent uh, into two cents two three four. Why do I say that? Arrows crossed. We've hit. Uh, I need to actually ask what these things are called and just view the document. I'm just going to call it an outlier here, but there's a proper name for it. This is an outlier, which is trying to bounce off here and reclaim. Again here, bounce off this reverse wave tendy and try and reclaim. There'll be a perfect touch on, I think it's uh, minus 2 SD of daily VRE, which we'll zoom in on a little bit later. To convert this rule around, you're going to have to start closing. Let me click this one. You're gonna have to start closing above two cents 130. So it's about 25 ish units away from here. You close above there. I'd be pretty stoked with VeChain and, and I think it could deliver a really good week. Six hour has continuation to the downside if it closes below two cents 115. So at least on the 12 hour, it has to reclaim above two cents 115 in order to stop this dumper from having its legs. As you can see, there's hidden hidden bear, which is a continuation signal. And that continuation signal to the downside happens at 2115. Any closes below there. All right. Every time we have these little crosses, it does reclaim the liquidity quite fast. There will be a zone of liquidity building here, roughly 2 cents 178 in about, what's that? At about tomorrow, so the next V chain daily print. So tomorrow, uh, to just before a US market opens, there's going to be a zone of liquidity that's formed here, but it's not going to hit it if it can't get above uh, two cents fifteen, two cents one one five. All right, what do we got here? There's a drive of bull dev happening, lower low in the candlesticks, lower high on the RO. Is your normal drive of bull dev. Okay, 
we can see that that is the daily mean over here, a daily bread. You got to reload. You got to reload. Bang, bang. Okay, daily bread is sitting at uh, twenty. Two, is sitting at two cents, one sixty-eight. Monthly's daily bread, uh, weekly's new weekly's daily bread mean is sitting at two cents, one sixty. Today it currently bounced off of the third, uh, the second standard deviation of this yellow mean on the daily magnet. Came in, cleared it, hit the top side, and just absolutely failed. So very terrible. We'll get this continuation signal of the three hour if you start closing above two cents one one three, which is now start. I would actually say as it gets closer to that, two cents one one five, which is starting to match up with our six hour. Was that correct? Over here, two cents one one five. If it starts closing above there, the three hour will be able to negate that. Uh, Hidden bear div that's formed on the six hour, which is going to be very hard. I, I really do like the six hour time frames. Okay, here, what have we got? We've got uh, contracting in volatility. So this move is starting to die out slowly. Contracting volatility was positively correlated, but losing correlation. So it's technically a range. As you can see, it comes up into a JMA here. If it can at least close above said JMA at to 1110 that will allow this cross on the 90 minute to kick up which would back the three hour any closes below i'll call it for the next print i think 2115 is about this region to see if this thing uh, actually retreats back up to its monthly mean at least 2243 pretty healthy over here i'm quite surprised that it hasn't actually been flushed whilst i'm talking about it 45 minute, ooh, dirty, 45 minutes, dirty. So the momentum bots have triggered down here. The only thing that needs to happen though is your next candle has to be pretty big. So it's gonna have to be about the same size as this. What's that, 97? This is gonna have to be about a 13, set, a 13 unit move, 13 point move to get it up here. All right, so let's just do 12 as it's high. It need to get to about uh, 2130 or two cents 130 in order for those <laughs> like dailies and three days not to put this thing in dump mode. All right, very sharp exit from here. Might look for it to reclaim this whole candle. We'll find out. All right, what's this? This is moving into 50-50 region. Might want to push a wick into 2115. So 2115, at least as of this post, is quite a pivotal region down here for V chain. I think if we can clear 2115, we're back into our weekly mean before the end of the day or before uh, end of Tuesday. Daily mean is over here, which is its magnet for the day. So that's not a far out observation. We have a zone of liquidity at 2142, building up on the next 15 minute print. What's that? This thing is technically in sneaky pump mode on the five minute. Arrows are pointing down, a little bit dirty. So as we can see, we're coming into that 2115 region. As that happens, there could be it could be a lot of fighting here for V chain. Let's go have a look at USDT on the 24 hour, USDT dominance on the 24 hour. And then we'll put it on the 12 hour, six hour. Okay, so obviously that dump has already happened. USDT trying to, might fuck around up here for a little bit longer at about 6%, 6.03%. Any breaking above this region, I do think the rest of the crypto market dumps. 12 hour, I wanna look at the six hour because that's quite a nice intraday time frame. 12 hours, gonna move into a range, okay? So its range would be pretty much, let's call it 6% to 5.88% or 6% to 6.6%, okay? Not so good if you are 
being bullish today let's see the six hours to say drive of hidden bear coming off okay any failures below this liquidity zone building here at 5.99 percent we do look for a push down to about 5.40 percent this is a zone of liquidity building down here at 5.8 percent so if it fails this region here we'll just give it that same 6.06 .06. if it fails below there we do look for it to come back down that would technically mean that uh shit coins and bitcoins will be putting on the pump all right if you found this information helpful please do like and subscribe as we come into that well-defined pivot here at 2115 it would be beautiful if this thing just wabadooed right back up to where it did before i finish this but i don't think that will happen as you can see hit the number she's getting scalped off so a very big moment here for v chain I'd say until the end of the week, we fail this region, bearish, baby. We get above this region, things start to get interesting. Uh, big moves from here at least. So let's just pull those numbers out. Okay. Price wrong is from there to daily, uh, to the weekly is 2.18% to the upside to the daily target is 2.55 percent and then to the monthly so there is a mean reversion play to be had here if it's strong enough to hold above that red line into this red line is 3.5 percent just call it now we're coming up into like more monthly levels at about 4.75 percent and a full retrace before the end of the month if this thing is strong enough does six percent move from here okay that's the bullish hopium now let's go just pull it down to 19 cents let's make that big 19 cents being the 24-hour cone 19 round about here so it's about the same just on the top side we'll go halfway it's about the same move to the to the downside here all right not so good for v chain if it can't break out above 2115 if it does off to the races if it doesn't it's all pain and no gain much love if you find this information helpful please do like and subscribe uh i've got eight likes on my last video I've got two subscribers we're getting there thank you for those who did like and watch those videos i hope they've been helpful for the xrp the ADA analysis this will be v chain i think tomorrow i'll either do ethereum trx or fet and yeah if you want access to these tools you can view the discord link below in the comment section of this video uh, you'll get access to some free tools from alpha trading tools you'll see the link to the discord there you get four tools uh, one will be the alr here another one will be like a inbuilt direction predictor uh, alpha volatility quality i think and then our avp alpha volatility percentile which would look something like the top here and pcs pearson correlations and those are the rules if you ever hear me so i'll be looking at my charts going bang dump mode actually looking good that is contracted there still dump mode this is 50 50 this is 50 50 this is negative drift negative drift means any orders that are bought up will be sold into aka look for lower highs this is now moving into positive drift on the 24 hour right negative drift sorry same thing any bull bull action will be sold into same thing here negative drift any bull action will be sold into not bad on the six hour it's changed up its rule so it's 50 50 it's trying to range itself here at the 2115 area here we have pretty much a pump mode but it's losing its trend and it's technically losing the pump here it would have to hold and close above 2112 in order to keep that going here we have uh, negative drift losing correlation uh, it will carry on printing to the downside below 2107 we'll print to the upside at least to 2123 if it can hold above 2107 here we have 45 minute that's what we're watching 
So this is going to be a very dirty candle on the 45 minute closes in six minutes time. I, w I don't mind if it does retrace its, its whole thing back down here as if there is a pump to come out of this, obviously I'm a little bit bullish right here. If there is a pump to come out of this, then it's gonna, the data becomes more sensitive. When you have big candles, they need to be followed by even bigger candles to keep the returns on a logarithmic scale going up. All right, here we have a con negative, negative drift, contracting volatility was positively correlated. Got to hold above 2102 in order to prevent it from shitting the bed. Here could be a one minute bounce or here. All right, same thing, 2102. So your range of break is 2102. If it fails that, she carries on dumping. And if it holds above 2115, she carries on pumping. All right, Afrikaan Crypto Warlord out.